Okay, good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm continuing um, our study in the book of Revelations, and we ended, let me get, let me get to the right position here, hold on. Okay, so we ended, we ended in with, um, I had said that, um, um, the word bathes means great knowledge, understanding deep things of God, a place of no knowledge. Where do false teachers come from? A place of no knowledge. So this was called the house of God. We are the temple. The house of God, because God dwelt, dwelt means to marry, to build a house, um, excuse me, I'm not used to my <laughs> hair being down, but it's getting warm here now. Okay, so let's start again. Um, so we are the temple, and the house of God, um, because God dwelt, dwelt means to marry, build a house, that place in the temple equals um in Hebrews 3 and 6, Christ is the son of his own house. Whose house are we? Christ's house equals to us and we equal to him. That's our heart. Now, the seven stars, which is uh, Revelation chapter 1 through 20, the mystery of the seven stars... My right hand, when you think of a right hand, you always think of authority in the Word of God. If you see something in the right hand of Christ, um, it's authority. Now, the Jews had a belief that the left-handed people were evil. One of the first judges God gave them, the Jews, was Ehud, and he was a left-handed um, man, and I just think that that's quite funny. Um, God has a sense of humor. Okay, so um, now, when you study the seven angels with the seven trumpets, you have to do that to say what the last one is. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 51, um, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Now, sleep was a term used for the dead in Christ. Um, those that have died in the Lord and those that sleep in Jesus, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Follow, now, follow closely here. Um, as you can, um, the mystery of the seven stars in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks where Jesus is standing in the middle, here's the mystery. This will hold true from one revelation to the other. In fact, it holds true all through the Bible. The seven golden candlesticks and the seven stars, the seven stars are the seven stars he has in his right hand. After these seven angels of these seven churches, angels, really um, the word is called anglos, means messenger. If people would only define the words they would have to get, they would, it would be much easier to get, to realize the mystery of revelations um, of the whole Bible. You have to put yourself back in that time and you have to research what these words mean. So angel means messenger. An angel is anyone with a message. You have heavenly angels. You have Michael was the death angel, he's the one that killed 185,000 of the Syrian when they tried to come in and attack 
southern Judah when God wasn't ready. Over there in the 19th chapter of 2 Kings, Gabriel was the announcing messenger, and he's the one that went in and announced the 70 weeks of Daniel in 9, 24 through 27, and he and his uh, he's the one that went and um, anointed, uh, I mean, announced to Mary. So you have announcing angels, messengers, and all the preachers were called angels or messengers. So we need to get um, that word angel out of our vocabulary and just look at them as messengers, okay? Okay, so... That's what we call, that's what we call it, you know, them now is messengers. You cannot um, have the message without the messenger. Seven candlesticks are the seven churches. Well, what's inside the church of the candlesticks? Oil. The oil is the picture of the message. So you cannot have the seven angels here without having the candlesticks. When people say the pre-trib rapture happens in the third chapter of Revelation, it does not. If you got seven angels and you got them all over Revelation, it has to do with the last trump. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all sleep. We shall all be changed in the moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Last is the word eschatos. Eschatos comes from the word Greek word echo. It means to hold. We say echo, that means to hold a sound, but it just means to hold. Eschatos, you get the word eschatology. It means a study Logos of the end times. Okay, so eschatos means the last in a series in which no other trumpet will sound. So we're going to be changed at the last trumpet. All we have to do is establish the fact there are some trumpets sounding at the end of time. We got them all over the New Testament. You got them right here in Revelation 8, chapter 8. And I saw the, I saw the definite article, the seven angels. There's no other seven angels. Um, well, we have gone past, now we're past chapter 3, where supposedly the pre-trip trip took place, so that's impossible. So here we go. Um, so now we're, um, there's no other seven angels. Um, you cannot have the message without having the messenger. There's no church, okay, has been no church has been taken out at this point. So it couldn't be the pre-trib. No church has been taken out at this point. You got the seven angels right here, and they're all given seven trumpets, Revelation 8-2. That's what the Bible says. The first angel sounded that followed hell and fire mangled with blood. Remember, a trumpet was a voice. Everything you see, it a trumpet, it's it's a signal, okay? Um, so a trumpet, it's a signal. When you hear a trumpet, isn't that a signal of what to do? If you're, let's say you're in the armed forces, okay? And you hear um, re reveille, that means uh, it's time to get up. If you hear you know, bells or da 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 da, whatever. That's um, means it's time for the for um, 
that's the sound in the morning. And in the dinner time, another sound call. At night, you hear taps being played, and that means it's time to go to bed. So trumpets are a sound, a voice, um, a signal, okay? When you hear trumpets, you hear voices. The first angel sounded. Verse 7, the second angel sounded. Verse 8, the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. The Bible speaks of stars falling to the earth over in Matthew 24. What are the stars? Um, you think maybe the seven stars, which are the seven angels, look here back to Revelation 1, and seven stars are seven messengers, and the third angel sound verse in chapter 10 at verse 8 fell a great star. One of the seven stars, the angels, the angel, the messenger, you must identify everything you can. You always must identify everything you possibly can when reading the word. So, Revelation 8.10, from heaven burning as it were a lamp, seven candlesticks in the seven stars are the seven messengers in the seven lamps. Isn't it? So you cannot leave any of these behind. And then he goes on down here, and that's the third angel, verse 12, and the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. Chapter 9, verse 1, the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, another star, another one of the messengers. Now we're way past chapter 3 where this pre-trib was supposed to take place. So you know what that is. The star falling from heaven is the message coming from the mouth of the refined church. That's what it is. And then he talks about the scorpions, okay? The scorpions and the locusts coming out of the smoke. Anytime you see locusts, Jews, the Jews were terrified of locusts. Locusts would devastate their crop, and God said, if you go after other gods, which they did, and all the sun and tree goddesses among the pagans, which is brought into the church and renamed Christmas or Christ Mass, Christmas was celebrated in Israel under a different name, Bell and Grove. Well, that's so the locusts would come in a hundred of billions, okay? Uh, the writers tell us. And the locusts devastated the fields in 15 to 20 minutes, and it terrified the Jews to see the locusts coming with all the crops out there because they would just wipe out a field in no time. Locusts were six to seven inches big, and they would devastate all the crops, and the Jews were terrified of them. And God said, when you're disobedient to me, you go after other doctrines, you go after these scorpions, and what did we say scorpions were? False teachers. So now we're still going. We're way after chapter 3, which was the pre-tribulation. So how is it scorpions like locusts? The locusts would destroy the literal crop. So what I'm saying is, how are scorpions like locusts, okay? The locusts would destroy the literal crop. The locusts would come hundreds of billions and block the light for 20 miles wide and 10 miles deep. And the light could not shine through. Well... That's what the scorpions, the false teachers, do. They block the light and they destroy the spiritual crop, which would be 
namos, Greek word law, legal, prescribed food, what God has prescribed for us. For animals, in our case, we are sheep. So the locusts destroy the literal crops and the scorpions destroy the spiritual crops, which is us and our connection to the true word of God because they're false teachers. So um, the scorpions, they block the light. Now we go down to the next trumpet, the sixth trumpet sound in verse 13, 9, 13. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. The golden altar inside the temple, outside the temple, was the brazen altar made of brass and some of the writers say it was made of copper. And the glassy sea, this big sea that's in the seventh chapter of First Kings, that's where Solomon is building the temple. The Bible said he built the glassy sea. Now we're even much further from Revelation chapter 3, which they use as the argument that that's the pre-tribulation, which it can't be because all this has to be fulfilled. He calls it a sea and it had 2,000 baths so all of these priests can come wash and then when they would leave the glassy sea, they would wash every morning all over. Then they would go over outside the temple and offer any sacrifice they had for that morning. They offered a lamb without any blemish every evening, a lamb without any blemish, sundown. Then they would come back, wash their hands and their feet. That's where the Pharisees inserted... That's where the Pharisees inserted that in their verbal law, they put in there before they ate, they had to dip their hands down into two containers as they walked into a room where there was a triclinium. The triclinium was a feast table. It shows in Matthew 24, chapter 26, and Mark 14, chapter, chapter 14 and Mark, and uh, Luke chapter 22, and John, the 13th chapter, they were not eating in communion with crackers and juice. That's not what they were eating. They were eating in the Passover the Passover. The fact that they were eating at a feast table and they were lying down, it's called a dinner bed. They laid down and to um, lap on one's breast. The last, uh, so in other words, they would all lay down um back to a breast and then, you know, back to a breast and that was their um, dinner bed. Now, the, the, the picture that everybody worships, which they shouldn't, the Last Supper is a lie. It's a stupid picture, actually. Okay? Leonardo da Vinci drew the Last Supper. Okay? First of all, it wasn't the Last Supper supper. It was the last literal Passover when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Then they began the spiritual Passover. The fact that they were lying down behind someone's bosom to lean back to the person behind you and speak to him, that's what John did. He didn't, as Leonardo da Vinci painted, um, wasn't sitting on the other side of the table. And Leonardo da Vinci, by the way, was a homosexual and he did not know anything about Jesus or God. And um, 
and he had them sitting at the table and he had John leaning his head over on Jesus's breast or bosom like a homosexual and that comes from Catholicism and we all know that Catholicism is evil. So throw them away the fact that they were lying down dipping in the sop which is the bitter herbs they were in the Passover the sixth trumpet revelations 9:13 heard a voice from the golden altar which is the prayers of the saints when you go back to chapter 5 and when he had taken the book the four beasts And the twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and a golden vial filled with the prayers of the saints. Revelations 8.13 Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And that's temple terminology. The censer made of gold they would put coals in, and that censer, the fire, had to come from the altar, and that either, um, Natum or Abatu, uh, to the candlesticks, or they offered a strange formula for the incense. Um, it had to be an exact formula. One of the things in the formula was frankincense. The golden censer had to do with getting fire and getting the incense, putting it in the altar, letting fog the altar fog up, and the high priest would come in and get on their face. They were not allowed to look up. If they looked up, God would kill them instantly. That's why it is believed they tied a rope around um, their foot. And if they didn't come out after 30 minutes, that's, then that's why it says in verse 1 of chapter 8, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of the half an hour. Then those bells around the robes of the high priests, um, the robes, it tells us that in Exodus 28, those bells around the bottom of the robes in Exodus 28 were supposed to be ringing. If they stopped ringing, then they would drag him out, meaning the dead body, and the next was going in. So how would you like it if you, if you were next and God just killed someone right before you, your turn? And God did not hesitate, okay, um, when he killed them. He killed them right away, right on the spot. So I'm going to end there, and then I'll continue our um, study on Revelations, um, proving that there is no pre-tribulation. I love you all. God bless you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you so much to all of you that have donated to my ministry. God bless you. I love you all, but Jesus loves you more. And God willing, this little Italian girl will be back. I love you. Sleep in Jesus' arms. And the next video will be a continuation of our study in Revelations, proving that there is no pre-tribulation. I love you. God bless you. Ciao.